Thank you. Um, so those tracks you heard uh, were some play along tracks. Um, one of the things that I've always tried to do, as, as all drummers should do, is try to keep the time. Um, when I was younger, sometimes I wouldn't keep the time. I have one of my brothers right here that goes to my church. He knows he's known me all my life. Keep the beat, keep the beat, keep the beat, keep the beat. You know, and that's that that was that was installed in me, and it took some time for me to comprehend that. But once I fully understood it, there's a thing I'm sure a lot of drummers know. It's called the pocket. You know, locking in with the bass player, piano player, guitar. Knowing you know where you're at instead of trying to just do all the cool stuff, that stuff will come. But when you lock it in, a lot of people are gonna respect you more for being able to keep the beat. Because even if you don't do a feel at all, and the whole band sounds great, everybody's gonna think you killed it. And he's like, I didn't even do that. I didn't do that on my tricks. It doesn't matter. Because you locked it in the beat and you stayed in the pocket. And so that's one of the things as drummers we have to always remember to lock the beat. Okay. Um, and a good practice at that is playing one beat for like two minutes without doing a feel. Two minutes, just, just play this. For example, you play the beat, it may seem boring, but you're practicing, you just... Locking in the beat, uh, y'all can hear me. You're locking in the beat, and so once you have that, it's not going to be hard for me because, like I said, everything else will come together. Everything else come together because you'll feel it too. Right Then the feel opportunity is there because you'll hear it and you'll feel it because that's the way you practice it. But I've seen a lot of guys not do that, and they try to do a feel or do a lot of stuff, and then they get off beat. And they didn't do their job by locking the beat in. You know what I'm saying? So that's very important. No matter how long you've been playing or you just started playing, have your pocket down. Plan to plan the click tracks and metronomes. It, it, it helps your timing tremendously. It really does. Because one thing the track is not going to do, it's not going to lie. Once the track is set to a certain BPMs, it's going to be the same. If it's at 150, it's going to stay 150. You might go to 145, or you might go to 160. But the track's gonna still be at 150. I mean, it's a good thing. Like I said, when I first started um, trying to play the tracks, like I said, it was hard for me because I wasn't used to it. You know, I was used to just playing raw, you know, playing, playing, playing. But it made me more disciplined. Like, if my timing is always at 150 with the BPM, nine times out of ten, when I play without it, I'm gonna be at 150. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, you know, I played in church. Some of you probably can tell. Um, sometimes church musicians get excited and, and everybody might speed up a little bit, you know, but more times than none, you lock it in the beat. For jazz, how many of us play jazz in here? Jazz drummers and piano players, jazz. The drummer is not the timekeeper in jazz. The bass player is. The bass player is, you know, they're the one that's actually locking in the beat. And the drummer's kind of got a little off time. They can do four to the floor. Or they can kind of do the, you know, they can do accent hits like that. Gospel music, rather, and a lot of other genres, the drummer is the person that locks in the beat and is, and is in charge of keeping the time. Okay? So, uh, one thing is locking in the beat. Okay? Any questions? Feel free to ask. Yes, brother. <clears throat> Every morning we can play drums. What is your warm up? My warm up. So, if I'm if I got a warm up um, that I'm focused on, because sometimes I warm up two ways. Sometimes I warm up with my hands or I warm up with my foot. Okay. Don't even play on the drum. Play on a pillow or a couch or a bed because it has less rebound effect. So it kind of makes you work a little bit harder. And if if you have a favorite rudiment you like or whatever, you can kind of do that. I like the paradiddle or the singles or the double paradiddle. And it's just, you know, starting off slow. You know, and doing it 
it slow, it's, it's, it almost goes into that method about locking in the beat. Make sure you have it first, trying try to go too fast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And now, if you're on a drum set, or even if you're not on a drum set, um, there's different type of foot techniques. Um, I use, I play on the ball of my foot, so the heel of my foot is always up, like I'm flexing my calf, because it's, it gives you more control, I feel, um, and it kind of works for me to be able to do that. Rather than playing flat foot, I call that the lazy man way. Yeah, just gonna say, you know, unless you're really tired and you're cramping or something, you're sore, but other than that, Try to use that and just try to do different patterns. One, 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 two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. One, one, one. Can you put it in the beat? A good practice on speed when you're doing the two. That's it. Those are eighth notes. One. Repetition is reputation, so you keep it going. And then um, the rudiments that you do on your pillow, on your bed, once you get to the drums, you can move them around on the drum set. So you can substitute one of the last parts that you're sticking for something else, a time or a cymbal. Okay? So if you're just going, doing doubles, or five stroke ball, right? So that goes back to locking in the beat. When you're locked all the way in the pocket, you're typically going to know where one is. You're like, are you keeping track of it in your brain, or are you just <laughs> listening and like playing along, you know, and looking for one? Um, well. I'm kind of weird, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it seemed like that last track. You know, I'm doing a lot, I'm doing a lot, but I was able to come back on one. It's kind of like it's just kind of feeling it, and that kind of goes along with knowing the music too. Kind of knowing where stuff yeah. is, and so um, when you're going something like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you just you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. Sometimes I might count it out because I know there's an intricate part that may be coming up, or I gotta you know make sure I hit that part in the middle of my time of being able to feel or do stuff like that. But normally I, I I usually feel it, and I just kind of know where one is. But sometimes I may count every now and then. <clears throat> For some drummers. Count the whole 16 bars while they're one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and they're doing it right back on, you know, on one. Um, and for different time signatures, um, different time signatures, I would say <clears throat> in soloing over something like seven, eight, or like five, four, um, it's it's good to kind of try to count it out first, so you know. Once again, it's locked in because if you try to go out there, it's like you know trying to run a full marathon, you know, without no water. You know, you're gonna fall and be done. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, count, count and filling it, 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 it coincides with each other. All right? Any other questions? You guys look like, man, just play some more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, who are some of your influences? Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I always say this God, you know, uh, give me the gift to be able to do this, you know, and um, not take it for granted because I know I, I, I should not be where I'm at, but because of him, you know what I'm saying, he's allowed me to, to be there and, and be here in this position. And it's, and it's a lot of times you get discouragement, you know, sometimes you seem like you may not be able to do the thing that he's doing or be able to find this type of thing at that time, but you, you keep practicing it. And so God, for one, is one of my inspirations, absolutely first inspiration. And then my next inspiration is uh, a drummer by the name of Eric Moore. You know, I really like Eric Moore, man. Uh, he has crazy hand speed, foot speed, and uh, he's just real clean. Uh, another, another person is Spanky, George Spanky McCurdy, who his off time is, is, is crazy. You know, his off beats is crazy, but he got a lot of syncopation, but he's right on beat every time, crazy stuff. And he does a lot of stuff in the pocket. You'd be like, oh, rewind that, you know, do all that. Another one, another drummer too is Tony Royster. Tony Royster Jr., you know, man, he's been a monster for years. And so I really, really enjoy, really enjoy Tony Royster. So um, Eric Moore and Tony Royster and Spanky are my true favorite drummers that I like. And myself. Any <laughs> <laughs> uh, more questions? Yes. How long have you been playing? I've been playing since the age of two years old. Um, I started playing on my grandma's uh, cookie pan and was putting dents in it. But I, <laughs> I remember that. They said, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, they, they said I, you know, was making sense what I was doing. I wasn't just making no noise. And so I was able to get my first drum set when I was four years old and started playing in church when I was four. And so uh, ever since then, kind of just been staying at it. So it's been a while. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let me know. The only thing I can do is. question in the back. Yes? It seems like you add uh, like your bass drum into a lot of your fills. Mm -hmm. Could you break down like one or, or like, you know, your concept there? Like how you split it up between your hands and your feet. Okay. You, can, you know, so, you make it like it can heat, you know, it like yeah. all gels, but it's... Okay, so I call this the stutter. I just really actually learned this concept about a year and a half ago. Because a lot of times, you'll notice if you're doing like... All right, you move that. Your foot is ending on your on your hand, but I call it the stutter because your foot is accenting while your hands are still moving. So, for example, um, so if you're going, uh, if you're going,
most of the accents are coming from my right hand. Why this is going. And then you can you can cut it off and still be doing your hand, doing your hands, and then come back in on a right? And then just kind of, you know, you kind of fill it out. Um, also, um, we're doing like doubles on your hands. accent under whatever you're doing with your hands um, as far as mixing up the hand and foot and making a zero together so. so sometimes it's an accent sometimes it's like a, it's like filling in the space between your hands mm -hmm. filling in between your hands and your foot exactly good question yes what is your favorite chop my favorite chop um i don't i don't even know if i have a favorite chop um, that i know of you know, to, to remember some of the chops, so I know I, I, I did it on purpose, I would, uh, I would name my chops. Yeah, give them a, give them a, a name. So, uh, there's one chop I, I used to do in high school um, called, uh, it's a weird name, you're gonna laugh at me, okay? But it's called Inside Fish Sticks, Outside Tartar Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Show us. No, inside fish sticks, outside tartar sauce. And it's kind of just, it's almost kind of like a drag um, with your foot kind of, kind of running with the, with the eighth notes. So, um, the reason why I called it that, sorry. The uh, reason why I call it that is because your hands are going inside of each other and then they're coming out of each other. Okay? So it's like. single but your left hand is going okay. and that's one um, that you can kind of use when you're ending a song Fellas, and we're gonna play three songs for you uh, real quick. Right, um, and then I'll be back. But thank you guys for your questions and everything. Appreciate it so much. And so I'll call them guys as they set up, so they're probably about two minutes, and I'll get right back to it. Okay, you guys. Get ready. <laughs> 